Um, Rachel did an amazing job, as as she always does. Um, I felt she was very present. Um, yeah, you know, very present with me. Um, she, you know, asked a lot of great questions. Um, yeah, I felt very understood. We have, as usual, our attendees pouring in. So go ahead, Magda, with your message awesome. for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. We have a public service announcement today. <laughs> um, here's a public service. So all of you know our wonderful Cindy. You know all the wonderful ladies on the screen today, obviously. But Cindy is starting two new programs soon, and I wanted to give her a little bit of promotion because I know she um, will not promote herself because she's, you know, oh, I'm a great trainer. No, she's an amazing, amazing educator, uh, an amazing coach, an amazing mentor. And she does a few programs during the year, but they don't come by often. So the two that she is starting very soon are foundation and mastery. So if you want to get your ACC and if you want to get your MCC. So um, the quick one is MCC. If you already have your ICF credentials, you know the ladder, you get the drill, you know the steps. And being a master coach, like Cindy is, and our speakers in this series are, it's pretty cool from many, many perspectives. And Cindy, I believe, has mentored more people to mastery than literally any other human on the planet. And that's a fact, you can call ICF and they will pull their records. So if you want to be mentored by a person who literally knows the most of what they are doing about mastery, she's the person to be working with. So um, if you're not working with her, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> so that's mastery. The other one that she's starting is foundation. So um, Cindy did a couple foundations in the past, I would say two years. But this is after a long break and um, now she's back at it. And what's really cool about her programs is that they attract a lot of people who are in very professional roles that uh, will utilize coaching as part of their job. So um, while you know Cindy is going to be making anybody into a great coach, especially if you work in an organization or if you want to you know, refer a colleague who works in a capacity where they will coach as part of their job, I think this is a great opportunity to refer somebody into Coach Aria for foundation because the group tends to kind of form around that. So it's in addition to being great foundational training for ACC, it's also great for networking and you get to kind of, you know, test the waters in your job as you're learning to be a coach. So the benefits are endless. Of course, I have to be clear. All of our foundation courses are amazing, okay? So no FOMO, please, if you don't get to work with Cindy. <laughs> um, Komal, for example, is wonderful, but very different. So always, you know, join us. We will help you out but Cindy is the one who's up next. So I really, really hope that you join her program. And if you have questions or you're ready to join or you want to refer someone, you can always email me, of course, but uh, support at coacharia.com is where you can reach us for any and all questions, including registering with Cindy for mastery, for foundation, for any of them. So that's my thank you, Coacharia host, i.e. Komal. Um, support at coacharia.com. Um, and yes, I am back after a long break. Um, you know what? Kind of want to say thank you as well for those of you who answered that webinar survey because what was really, really cool for me personally and like made my ego go a little bit poof was that a few of you wrote that you liked me being at the webinars at the start. So that was pretty nice. It felt nice and warm. So anyway, um, when appropriate and when I'm allowed. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs>
Anyway, that's it. That's the public service announcement. Join Cindy. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Magda. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and today, uh, you see Cindy is joining us from somewhere in the Mediterranean while she is on her cruise. So you will definitely hear from her at some point of time. But today, as you all know, is a live coaching session. And we are joined by our coach for the day, Rachel Dungan, and the client, Julie, who will soon introduce themselves. Before they do, I would like to invite you all to let us know where you're joining us from. We on the screen, all of us ladies sort of represent four different continents today. <laughs> so it's pretty inclusive, pretty, pretty diverse space we are holding for everybody. Uh, keep sharing with us. And I would also like to introduce Yamini, who is also from Kocharya, and she'll be moderating the chat for everybody today. So welcome Yamini as well. And without much ado, I would like to hand it over to Rachel. Rachel, welcome and uh, please take it over, introduce yourself to our audience. Oh, thank you, Kamal. So this is a guess the accent uh, competition and um, my accent is Irish and that, that a castle behind me is not where I live but it is in the town where I live. So I don't, I'm not responsible for the heating bills, thank goodness. So I'm from Lismore in County Waterford in Ireland. I am a pharmacist and a coach. And I have been, in 2022, I've been under the beautiful care and tuition and guidance of Cindy in the mastery program. So if you are considering going on that journey yourself, um, you can see I'm still alive. and. Um, this is, uh, and it's been a wonderful journey. So um, that has leadership, well-being, um, lifestyle, medicine, all of these kinds of things are kind of my gig. So I uh, really enjoy all of those um, aspects of working with people and helping us to lead at our best in, in every sense. So. That is a, a brief introduction to me. Uh, Julie, your, uh, uh, the continent you represent is? The continent I represent is Europe. Uh, sorry, is Australia, actually. Um, but I live in Europe. I live in, uh, in Switzerland, in Zurich. Um, I've known Rachel for a number of years. We've been coaching together. Uh, we first met on a training course some years ago. I work as a, a business manager in the finance uh, industry here in uh, Zurich. And my main responsibilities are around recruiting and training uh, for my team. So very happy to be here today and uh, be part of this live demo. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. So, um... We are going to dive into a coaching session for about 40 or 45 minutes, and then we'll have an opportunity to have um, questions and answers afterwards, or questions and questions afterwards, however it pans out. And um, yeah, um, I think, as, as you say, if you've got things that come up as, as, as we go along, you can pop them into the chat or save them for after we have completed our coaching session. So without any further ado, I might uh, check in with you, Julie, considering that you know we are, we're here together, we do have a, an audience. Before we dive into our coaching, is there anything that you need to be fully present? Um, yes, Rachel, thanks for asking. I wouldn't mind if we could do perhaps a, um, yeah, a grounding or a centering kind of exercise just to be, uh, yeah, part of, uh, yes, just to land. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and I guess the other thing I might mention is um, I would actually like to 
I, I probably will turn off my camera because uh, I have had eye surgery recently, um, which, well, that will be the topic of conversation. Um, but it's quite a, it's a little bit of a strain to focus on the, on the video. So if that's fine, I'm going to turn myself off camera. Perfect. Um, let's do that then. And I might do the same. Um, so you'll notice that the short haired version of Rachel is on the camera rather than the long haired version. All right, Julie. So have you something in mind that, as a grounding exercise that you'd like us to do together? Uh, no, happy for you to happy for you to guide guide it as I know you do have quite a number of exercises up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's do a maybe two minutes or so of of PQ reps that we've done before. So anybody in the uh, audience as well that wants to join us to arrive into this space with us, you're very welcome as well. So if you are in a comfortable space and it's safe to do so, I know it is for you, Julie. Um, I'd invite you just to close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. And bring your attention to your breath. And notice as you breathe in through your nose, if that's possible for you. Notice the temperature of the air on the inhale. And the temperature of the air on the exhale. And then as you continue to breathe in, and out, bring your attention to your fingers and maybe even rub the fingertips against one another with such attention that you can feel the ridges of the fingers as they come in contact with one another. And then as you continue to do that, maybe stroke your palms against one another and notice the temperature, the sensations, sense of touch as you do that. Maybe bring your attention back to your breath. Inhaling through your nose and imagining your breath going all the way down to your feet. And noticing your toes. Noticing your big toe, second toe, middle toe, fourth toe, baby toe. And notice their contact with whatever surface they're in contact with. And as you continue to notice your breath, take a long, slow inhale and a longer, slower exhale. And whenever you're ready, you can let me know when you're ready to begin. I'm ready, thank you, Rachel. Mm. Yeah, so I know you've given some thought to what your topic is for today, Julie. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to know what it is, given that we have about 40 minutes together. Okay. Um, so my topic is, as I mentioned, I had, um, I, I had my eyes glazed recently, a couple of weeks ago. 
And what I noticed, and the surgery went, went all fine and everything. What I noticed, though, is since about Thursday of last week, I've been having real difficulty seeing, looking at the, you know, the screen, the computer screen at work. Um, yeah, um, my phone, and, um, yeah, to, to read. And um, I had the impression that earlier last week, it was better um, because I was at work um, yeah, earlier in the week and, and I could, you know, although it was a little bit blurry, I could, I could make it out. Um, but then come Thursday, you know, I could hardly see anything on the screen. Um, I had to sort of really zoom, you know, zoom and magnify the screen um, you know, a couple of hundred percent to, to even make it out. Um, and I noticed that I was having some perhaps negative self-talk, I guess we call it that. Um, yeah, about it. Or, you know, maybe berating myself or telling myself, oh, I should have done this or I shouldn't have done that. And maybe that would have, you know, maybe that would have helped my, my eyes, you know, maybe because of what I did or I didn't do, I'm in this situation. Um, yes, so that's, that's what I would like to just explore today. Mm. Yeah, there's, it, it seems that the last couple of weeks have brought up a lot of different contexts for you and feelings and emotions by the sounds of it as well. What, what, how are you feeling? Um, how am I, um, about the, about what I've been through, right, about the procedure you mean, or, or yeah, right they, now? Right, right now, or whichever, whichever feels right, but yeah, either or both. Yeah. Um, well, right now, no, right now I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm, 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 uh, yeah, quite calm and, and, uh, relaxed despite, uh, <laughs> you know, knowing there are lots of people listening. Um, but, uh, well, obviously the, the, the surgery was, um, a little bit, a little bit scary, um, but it was it was fine, and um, I got through it. And yeah, uh, there were times though during the recovery where I was a little bit like, oh, you know, um, not that I, not that I was questioning myself if I'd done the right thing. I, I, that I, I I know that I did. It was just a little bit of a, you know, at times not being able to. So that that did sometimes bring up a little bit of uh, would probably be the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, and and when I had this, oh now I'm not, you know, now I now I feel like I'm not seeing quite as well as I did, you know, a few days earlier. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned about the whole about the whole thing and, and worried about whether this is normal or not. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. There, so th it sounds as if the, the, the way that you describe it, there was a lot of, that, that as things were improving that that was okay. But when they seem to disimprove, that was more difficult for you. Am I mm -hmm. picking that up correctly? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, not quite sure if this is, you know, a normal, yeah, normal part of the process or not. Because, you know, and this was more affecting one eye than the other. The, you know, the left eye was, I felt, you know, had gotten worse, whereas the right eye was getting better. So, um, yeah, there was that that concern 
Mm. And I'm curious, Julie, what is it in this session that about that that you want to explore in more depth in this session? I suppose it's I suppose it's more about just um, maybe coming to terms with um, with with these with these feelings and um, yeah, and to maybe to also s stop the the oh, but maybe if, maybe if you had done this or maybe if you hadn't done that, you know, things might be different. Um, yeah, I think it's more that maybe re reducing that um, judgment or maybe, maybe blame. Um, that I feel is a little is is a little bit there mm. so by the end of this session what i'm uh, there is something about coming to terms with the feelings of that have arisen from the last couple of weeks and mm -hmm. also something around stopping the the, the self-judgment and the self-blame and that maybe if i had or maybe i should type of yeah voice yes Yes. Hmm. Anything else? No, I think that's it. And if you were to imagine ourselves now in 30 minutes time, having mm -hmm. got that, how would you know you have it? I think it would be just a sense of more more peace um and yeah a bit more calm and less less of this chatter you know this mental chatter mm. Mm. And when you experience more peace and more calm and, and less mental chatter, what's that like for you? It's, it's just peaceful. It's, uh, it's peaceful. It's, um, Yeah, it's the sense of like, yeah, I, I, I've done the, you know, I, I did the right thing or I, I don't have to sort of question myself. Um, the sense of, uh, I don't know if contentment is the right word, but it, I, I guess it's more just peace. Hmm. And do you, I, I'm, I'm curious if you, where you feel peace in your body, if at all. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, where do I feel peace? I think in my heart. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just a sense of sort of okay, you know, okayness and like, yeah, like everything's good. Mm. So everything's good, a sense of okayness and that sense in your heart. It all is good. Mm. Mm.
I know it's pretty, um, you know, you've had the last couple of weeks have, have changed quite a bit for you. But if you were to articulate why this is really important for you now to address, what's, what's coming up for you? Um, I guess it's, you know, this, this whole sort of, uh, I don't know, second, whether it's second guessing myself or this, um, yeah, this, this kind of mental sort of, you know, um, self, the self-talk about, oh, um, I mean, if, if, you know, I think life would just be <laughs> so much more peaceful if I, you know, if it wasn't there, right? Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I think I'm one of these people that can overthink things or can overanalyze things, um, you know, as, as you well know, and uh, yes, um, you know, I think just, uh, yeah, trying to free myself of some of that um, is important, just for a general sort of well-being and, and peace of mind. Mm. You know that word, as, as I'm listening to you, I, I, I'm hearing peace, peace of mind, your well-being, it, 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 and free from things that get in the way of that. It, 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 as I, I, I'm wondering what value that you're tapping into there that's important to you it feels as if something's really important um I think one of the values or you know one of one of my values is around harmony mm. you know that it and um yeah you know it's this inner harmony right when you have that mental chatter going on it's not harmonious Um, yeah, because there is there is that going on. So um, I think it's it's around. I think it's around. It's a, it's around harmony. Mm. And how do you see that that harmony connecting with the peace you've been describing and peace of mind? Well, it's really, well, it's related. I mean, um, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're peaceful, when I'm peaceful, then I'm, or then I'm, then, then I am in harmony with my surroundings and, and, uh, you know, um, and vice versa, right? If things are, if I'm, yeah, if I don't have that, you know, inner harmony, um, then yeah, then then peace is disturbed. Mm. So you know, whether that's a, whether that's a whether that's a, you know an outer conf, you know, it, and that can be an outer conflict with somebody, right? Um, which disturbs the the harmony and the peace, or it can be an inner you know, an, an in sort of an inner conflict or an, yeah, uh, an inner sort of um, misalignment. Um, yeah, that causes then that, that disharmony and um, 
state of not being peaceful. Mm. I I don't know if this is true, Julie, but it, it sounds as if this example that you have today for us to explore around the the feelings um, and and stopping the self-talk is is a microcosm for a a way of exploring this harmony and peace and this inner and outer conflict you've been describing. I'm wondering what, what, if anything, resonates with you about that impression I'm getting. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, I think, I think you're right. I think it is, you know, it is, um, yeah, it, you know, it is, it certainly is, is a, it, like you say, a microcosm of, you know, of sort of, um, yeah, a, a broader topic around sort of, you know, peace and harmony and, you know, conflict and, um yeah, and and it's you know, and this is how it's showing up currently. Mm. So, so Julie, thank you for setting the context uh, for our conversation and being so willing to dive in and explore it. Um, and I'm wondering where you would like to dive in first so we can explore this matter in more depth in this session. Where would you like to start? It's a good question. Um, where would I like to start? Um, I think it's around the yeah these the, the the sort of you know the voices you know the 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 should have should have not that kind of thing um, <laughs> much as I don't necessarily want to give them more airtime but um, yeah it's uh, yeah. yeah. It's something to do with, you know, yeah. Maybe maybe we can start with an exploration somewhere around, somewhere there. I can hear the hesitation in your voice as you're sh- even naming that. I'm I'm wondering, have wh- what's that hesitation? I guess the hesitation is not wanting to give not wanting to you know like spend more time even like you know going over you know what I think I should have or shouldn't have done um you know it is what it is uh and really is it worth you know talking about yeah what I you know I should have done this or I shouldn't have done that I I don't know you know whether that would have made any difference really so, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So I guess that's where it's coming from. And yet, that's the important place to put, that's what you've named as where to start. Despite that hesitation. Is that... Yeah, but even as I say that now, you know, and I say, yeah, actually it doesn't matter, you know, you know, it doesn't matter. And it's true, actually, it doesn't matter, you know, it, yeah, really, because I don't know if, I don't know if doing those things would have made a difference or not, really. So, uh why um, speculate or why um, why sort of you know 
why berate myself for, for these things? I, yeah, great. It, it, it's a good question. And I'm wondering what other questions that there are, because I, I know you, you, you have a lot of questions. Um, what other questions could you, would it be helpful to explore some other questions you could ask yourself that might be, mm. might give you more, uh, help you get learning from this experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. We could, yep, we could certainly, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you know, what's, what's, what's the point, yeah, you know, what's the point of talking, talking down to myself about, you know, about this, because, like I said, it, it is what it is, right, um, and uh, yeah, I, I can't necessarily do anything a bit, or I can't do anything, you know, different. Um, hmm. Yeah, and I also think, what's coming to mind for me is also maybe some, something around expectations, you know, um, yeah, um, you know, patience is, patience isn't necessarily my, my strong suit, um, so, um, yeah, I think this, this, perhaps I, Perhaps I had some expectations about myself or the healing or whatever it was that um, I wasn't really aware of. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting because, you know, what I went, um, so last Monday, so it was, you know, a few days I think five days after after the the procedure, I went to the I went to the doctor's office to get the contact lens removed because um, you know they put this lens to protect your eye, and um, you know at the at the um, at the clinic you know they have this chart of letters you know when you go and get your eye tested and 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 and. She was asking, oh, can you see anything? And I was like, yes, I can read those letters. And she's like, oh, that's really great. You know, she said, that's great. You know, a lot of people, you know, majority of people come in. And she said, and after five days, they can hardly see anything. You know, um, a lot of them, she said, you know, some people can barely, you know, just about open their eyes. So the fact that you are, you can actually read the letters is, is great. You know, there's only very few people that you know can do that so I was kind of I was kind of I don't know maybe proud or you know there was something about there was something there about oh the, yeah now if, when I think about it that's there was something around yeah some kind of <laughs> it seems silly like you know proud of being able to 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 read those letters already after five days type of thing um, going on. So then when, when, you know, a few days later when I couldn't, you know, could hardly see anything then, yeah, it felt a bit like, oh, now I'm sliding backward. Mm. And sliding backward meant what? Um... It, 
what comes to mind is sort of, oh my God, what happened? You know, it's like I was doing so well and now mm. I'm not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was almost like, what's wrong? You know, is there something wrong with me? Or, yeah. Um, yeah, what's, what's, what's gone, what's going, what's gone wrong or what's going wrong or uh, why am I falling, falling back or falling, yeah, um, why is it, why is it deteriorating when I was making, you know, such good progress a few days ago? those voices of fear and judgment and self-blame have a lot of concerns they're mm -hmm. worried for you and they ask a certain quality of question uh, by mm -hmm. the sounds of it yeah yeah I'm wondering what that voice of compassion and self um, and peace, that voice of of peace and compassion that that you mentioned and calm. What kind of questions that voice would ask of you? I think that voice would. Um... would say, would ask, um, you know, how long, you know, how long, how long has, you know, or would ask me to, you know, think about what I've done, right? Basically, you know, <laughs> with regards to my eyes, it's like, think about what you've done. And, you know, you've, I mean, basically, you know, you're cutting your eye, open or yeah you know it, it, I mean yes you know it's it's all very progressive nowadays and stuff but still it's it is invasive you know it is an invasive procedure um on a very sensitive um part of your body you know part of the body so um you know yeah that that it that healing takes time and you know I, I can't expect my body to sort of heal or get over get over it you know within within a week or or two um i mean yeah maybe maybe it does happen for for some people um but actually, for the norm, you know, it's probably more like four to six weeks. So, um, yeah, you know, to, to just consider consider that and to 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 just have some some patience with with myself and and with my yeah to not to not stress about it and to just let 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 my body you know take its time to heal itself because mm. it knows how to it knows how to heal itself but it does take you know it does take a little bit of time mm. your body knows how to heal itself and it takes time. Mm. So gi given that, what's your sense of the most loving, patient things that you could say to yourself quieten that mental mental chatter as the next three to four weeks unfold I 
that I think what I could say to myself is that, um, you know, my, my body is doing its, it's doing its best. Um, it's, yeah, you know, it's, um, it, it, it knows what to do and um, it's doing its best. Um, yeah, to not, uh, to not be impatient or to have such maybe high expectations of, of myself, you know. Um, it thinks, you know, before I, you know, when I went for the you know, surgery, you know, or obviously, you know, the doctor said, you know, it's, it's, you know, they were like, this is really, you know, very sort of tried and true, you know, method, you know, it's been done, you know, for, for decades now. And it's, it's really, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a very successful um, procedure. Um, and just to trust in, to just trust that they knew what they were doing and that my body knows what it's, what it's doing. And um, yeah, that, that, that everything will be, will be fine. I guess just to have, to, to have that, that trust or that faith um, that things will be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust, faith, anything else, Julie? I said, just I think that's it. Just to, just to, yeah, maybe to, maybe just to slow down. You know, just to take, just take things easy and, yeah. Um, and not, and not stress. Mm. Take things easy, not stress. So we have a few more minutes before we close the session, but I'm, you mentioned that success for you from this session would be a sense of more peace and more calm mm. and less mental chatter. I'm wondering where, like where you're at in that journey at this point. Good. I feel a lot more reassured or yeah a lot a lot um a lot calmer um yeah about the process and yeah it's true you know just yeah I, you know it, it will work out and my body knows what it's doing and uh yeah you know um yeah so so just a lot a lot more at peace with with what's happening. Mm. Yeah, you know that I ask this a lot in my sessions, um, so you, I, you won't be surprised to hear this question coming. But I'm curious to know what you're learning about yourself at this point as a result of our conversation today. I, th I think the biggest thing is a, something to do with, you know, trust and just, you know, trusting, trusting the process, even though I can't see, you know, I can't see it and just, um, yeah, you know, having faith that things 
will work out for the best. Um, yeah, it's sort of, you know, bringing that, I think it's just bringing that home at a deeper level. Mm. And what we mentioned earlier about this kind of situation being a microcosm for some of the other internal and external conflicts uh, that, that occur that can disrupt that harmony and peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what, what opportunities you might be seeing for bringing this, these, that insight about trust into other contexts. Interesting. Um, I guess it's maybe area around around. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, even though we some say, oh yeah, you know, things things happen for a reason. You know, um, whatever. I mean, you know, when something when something happens. We often say, oh, yeah, you know, that it happens for a reason. And yeah, you know, really, yes, it, it is. And often, and, and it is true, right? There is, there is, it really is that, right? When things happen, there is often a, you know, a greater, or there is a reason behind it that we're often, you know, not aware of um, the time um, when, it's, when it's happening. And it's often maybe then only with hindsight um one can see that um so yeah i think it's just you know just bringing that awareness as you said to you know the wider um the wider context and just to know that okay whatever whatever is that might be going on sometimes you know in the in in the broader world or you know in my broader sort of context is you know is happening for a reason and there you know there is something to be learned or gained from it mm. it'd be really interesting to see how that pans out i'd be fascinated to learn <laughs> but um so Julie, as you kind of see yourself rolling through over the next three to four weeks, um, mm -hmm. as, as this process unfolds, as it does, what, what if anything do you see potentially getting in the way of staying connected with that sense of trust? I think it's just about reminding myself to be patient, to, to, um, yeah, to be patient, you know, that, that things, I would say good things take time, you know, um, that, yeah, um, yeah, that it's just about being patient and, maybe just yeah kind of sometimes breathing into that discomfort of you know yeah because like I said you know patience not isn't necessarily my strong suit but yeah sort of just maybe breathing into that discomfort if whenever I'm sort of starting to feel impatient is just to remind myself of that Reminding yourself of good things take time and breathing yeah. into the discomfort when you feel it. Yeah. Mm. As, as we just come to the you know, last minute or two of our session, Julie, I, I really want to publicly, because this is public, uh, acknowledge you for your courage and 
determination to really face those voices of fear and blame and judgment and challenge them and find other ways tap into that sense of trust for yourself it's it's inspiring to hear you articulate that and thank you for being so open and vulnerable and courageous thank you rachel for the fantastic coaching and yeah for helping me get to a better place <laughs> how would you like to close the session i'm i'm very happy to end it here thank you all right thank you thank you Thank you, Rachel. Wonderful um, listening to you in dialogue. And um, Julie, I'd like to check with you first. How was the session for you? Um, great. I think Rachel um, Rachel did an amazing job, as, as she always does. Um, I felt she was very present. Um, yeah, you know, very present with me. Um, she, you know, asked a lot of great questions. Um, yeah, I felt very, I felt very understood. Yeah, I think that would sum it up. Yeah, a lot of a lot of what you were saying, Julie, you know, some of the participants and even I was feeling like mm, those things resonate with with me too. Like many times the self talk shows up really at inappropriate times when we become impatient. So thank you for, for taking us along on your journey and sharing a bit of you with us. Thank you. Rachel, how was, how was the session? How did that go for you? Uh, for, for me, I was delighted that I that both of both Julie and I were able to just be with one another as we, as we are and not be distracted by the fact that there is an audience and I know that that's a for me it's a big sign of a big marker for me of my own growth and expansion as a person and as a coach because certainly there has been when that has not been the case I've gotten my own way with that negative self-talk that Julie was articulating myself being worried about what will other people think and then all that kind of thing so I am um, yeah I'm thrilled that we were both present for one another and that 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 wasn't a factor that got in the way And thank you, Rachel. And before I continue talking with you, I would like to say to our participants, bearing in mind the time, um, Rachel may not be, or I may not be able to take any questions, but please type your questions in, or you may send it directly to Rachel. She will um, put the details into the chat. Um, and you create a blog or in some find some way to answer your questions. And please give us some feedback onto the chat. We'd love to hear your comments on the session. Um, or at least say what you're taking away from the session. We'd also love to hear that. Also, I want to say that, you know, uh, Rachel runs this program on mental fitness. 
and quite good with working with self talk and savages and you know patterns of thinking um she'll give you a details where you can check that out yep so i and, have uh, i put my email yep. in and also the link to that into the chat if anybody's interested okay thanks rachel yeah, also, I also love the flow of the conversation between you and Julie. Um, and I love the turnaround piece when you did the lovely piece, very insightful on if that was what the self-talk and you bear in mind harmony and compassion and uh, patience, what would the questions to you be? Oh, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, for, Kumal, know, is there any questions showing up or any anything? Sorry, sorry, uh, go ahead, Mark? Julie. We have a time delay. I can feel it. Julie, you wanted to come say something. Sorry, Rachel. Ra okay. Rachel was going to say something, and yeah, and you, Kamal. <laughs> Go ahead, Kamal. I don't see many questions, but I do see quite a lot of appreciation and the points that everybody has sort of picked up from this conversation on the pace, on the questions, the articulation of questions in particular. And I think uh, it's sort of resonated well with quite a lot of people. And uh, yeah, I have really enjoyed the conversation and especially that I wasn't seeing and I was just focused on listening. I think that was also a very good experience. Yeah, yeah so Cynthia is saying that I was- Rachel, I'll leave you to round up. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 complete your thought, Kumar. No, I was just reading out what Cynthia has written about, like, she was concerned that how we'd be able to read the expression and, you know, nonverbal language because the cameras were off. So I think she's resonating on the same thing that just focusing on the listening and tonal quality can really help us, you know, in the conversation. It, it's an interesting thing with the audio visual and, and there is quite a lot of research to suggest that we listen better when the cameras are off and we can get a little bit less distracted as coaches and yet then we're missing as we you know we are missing some visual cues as well so it's you know there there are pros and cons yeah I was going to say, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're, we're talking about like my issue is a visual issue, right? Not being able to see, <laughs> yeah, not being able to see properly. So um, yeah, I can, I can see like, you know, the chats coming in, but I can't, I can't read, I can't read them at all. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's really interesting. I know I really, I felt, I felt very much heard, you know, um, yeah uh in the conversation so thank you rachel mm -hmm. well julie there i know you can't read it but there's a lot of love and appreciation for you in the chat uh for being so brave and open and vulnerable and bringing real things to the to these to the sessions so thank you thank you thank you and um, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Kamal. And um, uh, everybody that's been on, on the call for a, um, yeah, our tapping into our learning journey together. We can all, when one of us learns, all of us can learn. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Please do stay with us for the oncoming weeks. See you all later. Thank you, Rachel and Julie. Bye, Cindy. We'll see you soon. Thank you.